Make sure to be a member on the channel, link is in the description. Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you my members Astropub, Patrick, uh, Silami, Vivi Balestra and Lafouche. Thank you all for being members, it helps a lot and let's get into it. So today we are going to check it out. A cool little feature that that was found a couple of patches ago I think uh, and I actually uh, realized that but they changed it something and then after that I uh, did some weird stuff and ended up forgetting about it so we are going to talk about how to actually be efficient with your fuel uh, in a in a cool way uh, in a very uh, good way actually uh, so today let's uh, get to a test flight first I'm going to get 20 minutes in the F-14 because it's an aircraft that consumes a lot of fuel and yeah and uh, first of all let's talk a little bit about these stuff that are on the screen I'm actually using the War Thunder real-time information uh, like executable or program it's a overlay program so it's not uh, it doesn't change anything in the game it just reads stuff uh, from the server of the game and tells me about it over overlaying over the game so it's uh, completely safe uh, at least for my knowledge I talk with the guys on Gaijin and they said it's uh, it's fine to use it so yeah I'm using it really hard, easy to install I'm going to leave it in the description if you want to uh, you just have to click it and then you configure how you want to if you guys want to I can make a video on that as well But yeah, the information that I have there of course uh, up there is the sweep angle the heading of the aircraft the AOA the climb rate turn rate the G's that I'm pulling but down there. I put it down below the the Little uh, thing there. I, I, I will change some of this stuff uh, Probably in the future, but for now this is fine just to show a little bit and there we have the fuel uh, how much fuel we have in kilograms uh, the fuel consumption as you see 2.64 uh, kilograms per minute uh, the thrust so 98 kilograms uh, force you know and then the RPMs of the engine if I turn the engine up as you see let's take off as you see the power is increased obviously we are getting air we are getting a lot more consumption and as you see the higher the speed that I go the most the more amount of fuel it consumes uh, you know it consumes uh, because obviously there's more air getting into the aircraft and as you see on the fuel on up there on the time fuel on the normal uh, HUD that we have it's consuming a lot of fuel so as you see the kilograms are just depleting very very fast and obviously it's a problem sometimes because you consume a lot of fuel and you just are you want to just uh, basically in a battle you want to be as light as possible but with a very good fuel consumption as well uh, which makes it so that it's kind of problematic sometimes in an aircraft like this that you have to use actually a full um, tank for example to, to a five minute battles you know and you are heavy AF so yeah one way that you can actually bypass this is to actually configure configure the the fuel stages of afterburner obviously because the afterburner is actually the main thing that actually uh, burns a lot of fuel as you see I'm burning basically a hundred kilograms of uh, fuel per minute and if I go to full afterburner it goes to a thousand so it's ten times more more fuel that it consumes you know uh, and that depends on a lot of things you know speed and temperature and a lot of things but still as you see uh, basically 120 kilonewtons per engine so very strong engine as well uh, but still it is a problem because you don't want to be as heavy as uh, possible you know you want to be as light as possible so what do you do to make it so that you actually have um, a middle ground between the full afterburner and the normal military power because it's a lot of change and as you see I already configured I'm going to show to you if I click just a little bit of the shift it goes to 500 600 basically half of the consumption that I did it depends you can configure this to be a little bit more easy to get to lower amounts or higher amounts as you see right now 450 if I do I did a little click more 
700 you know so you can basically control how much fuel you actually want to burn and how much power you want to produce uh, the normal amount as you see just a little click 600 it's fine and the amount of power is better than the power that you produce I mean it's twice as many power as you at least as you produce in the military power but you are consuming a lot less fuel as you see uh, but if I go to full afterburner even though I produce like 20 to 30 percent I produce um, not even that maybe uh, more power I consume like 10 times like twice as much fuel as the first stage that I did um, so yeah basically what we need to do that as you see I consuming just a little bit or to consume a lot of fuel you have to actually configure in the options and in the controls ignore this so first of all you will go to controls and then there is two ways that you can do this you can either use the mouse wheel to actually do this and use the throttle axis so uh, each amount of uh, little bit of uh, rotation that you do in the mouse wheel will increase its power a little bit or more or, you know but for people that uses like me the mouse wheels for uh, zoom axis that I really enjoy you can do this with the power setting here so first of all you go to throttle axis edit axis and basically do this with the, con the, the, the controls you know relative control uh, this is the amount of that I am comfortable with you know you can tweak this uh, relative control sensitivity and the non-linearity to get a little bit more precise on how much fuel do you have but the, the I mean the, the thing is you have to counter it uh, in a way that if you put the non-linearity is just to make it so that at first it's really easy and then it's really hard to actually uh, you know uh, change the amount of power so you have to hold more shift or control in in, in, in my options over here uh, to, to mix and change the, the throttle settings and the relative control sensitivity basically is the sensitivity in which uh, the controls are changed so if I took everything out here for example as you're going to see I'm holding control for example but look at the throttle it's taking a lot of time to do this a lot of time to get power and stuff like that and it's just too much it takes too much time you know and in a jet you have to be as quick as possible so 100% is too fast 90 I think it's just I mean 80 to 90 is the sweet spot so as you see it's still a little bit not as fast as 100 but it changes the speed properly and you together with that you configure a non-linearity of 1.6 in my opinion I think it's a good one uh, so that you can actually not just go to full afterburner you can actually actually just do a small quick uh, little click and it will go to a, a middle ground between the the um, military power and the full afterburner as you see here I'm consuming less than half the the amount of fuel that I was consuming uh, consuming uh, before and if I use full afterburner as you see I can click the shift again and it goes to full afterburner and I can do it quickly change to military power small click on shift makes it 400 500 it's not a, a fixed value okay uh, because it's not an actual uh, the stages of afterburners are not actually modeled what it means is that it is an axis and you are clicking just a tiny bit more on that as well okay the more you co go on the non-linearity here you, the, uh, the more amount of power you have to hold shift to get quickly to full power so it's a matter of uh, having a balance between uh, being quick between throttle changes you know and being very precise on what power unit you want a small afterburner or you know for example I did a, a little bit of a higher uh, click there 600 if I did a little bit tiny of a oh it, it burned off let's 
<laughs> I went with too little, uh, too little fuel. Let's just take off again. Hold up. Uh, so uh, let's. Engines are all right. Okay. So just a little click, for example. Again, 200, 300. Um, a tiny little click again, for example. You go to 700 or something, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, 600. But if I hold the shift a little bit, it will go to full power. And it is just, you know. You have to hold it together a little bit to get to full power. So it's a way to control the amount of speed that you want. And another thing that you can uh, control with this is to actually put... One of the, uh, I mean, this is the mouse button 4, it's one of the lateral uh, mouse buttons that I use for flares. And I put it on decreasing the power as well. So what it, what this means is that when I'm full afterburner and I'm just um, click the flares button, it changes to military power. It helps a lot uh, when you are just flying around and you see a missile quickly and it will make sure that you lose the afterburner to actually make it so that you don't die so yeah so just remember that a uh, very cool option and let's test it out in some other aircraft as well and don't mind the, the 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 program that i was talking about it doesn't change anything in the game you know it's not a hack or anything like that it's just reading stuff directly from the game and showing it to me on the hut i could just <laughs> fly around on the inside of the cockpit and depending on the aircraft you can actually see the consumption and other stuff here so it's basically just reading stuff but uh, in simulator it helps a lot because you actually have uh, plenty of uh, information that normally sometimes uh, they don't have inside the cockpit so that just helps you a little bit and it's uh, stuff that you would normally see in an aircraft normally maybe not the turn rate uh, but everything else is something that you know you have on the on the inside of the aircraft. Even the turn of the aircraft, I think. But still, let's compare it to the MiG-23. So as you see, I'm burning 400 kilograms per minute. If I took to um, to uh, military power, 100. So I can just do a small click. So 300, for example, if I hold it a little bit, even more power, 500, military power again, small click. So you have many, many uh, different types of afterburners in that manner, you can produce more power, less power, I mean, I'm still producing 140 kilonewtons, as you see, and if I do to... Um, military power and producing 84 kilonewtons so yeah it's a large difference as you see let's go that way so that we can actually test a little bit more and as you see the fuel consumption decreases a lot with this and the power is still very good i mean i'm not consumption i mean basically half of almost half that i was uh consumpting consumptioning uh, consuming, sorry, uh, before, but I'm still producing 130 kilonewtons. I mean, it's just 10 kilonewtons less than I was producing before. And to be honest, to compare it to, yeah, this engine can produce 158 kilonewtons. So yeah, compared to, I mean, 85, 84 kilonewtons, as you see, I do a small little click, and it goes to a 130 kilonewtons, consuming basically half of the fuel. So it is just a way to be more efficient, be more precise on what you are doing, and yeah, pretty cool, right? Uh, and a fun thing to do is look at the climb rate on this aircraft, man. Look at that, <laughs> 300 meters per second. Obviously, it cannot hold this forever, but still it's fun to see that number going there. Uh, and yeah, the less speed that I get, as you see on the power, even... Pulling G's can decrease your power, as you see. Look, because of the intake, obviously, of the engine. So it depends on the airflow as well. And obviously, because I'm producing less power. I mean, look at this. In a turn like this, 
I'm producing basically the same power as I was producing before if with military power. So this is just a very weird thing and very fun to actually play with this, this program, you know. And let's um, take a look on another aircraft that has a very bad consumption rate. So we are here with the Vegan, obviously one of the aircraft that pff, consumes... I mean, it doesn't consume that much fuel, to be honest, but it's just that it's, it doesn't carry that much, I think. I don't know, let's test it out. It's the first time I'm, I'm actually flying this aircraft with the program, so I, don't, I really don't know. Let's take off. So, the more speed that I get, uh, the more air is entering the engine, the more air the compressors are compressing, and then I get more power, as you see. The more speed that I get, the more power I get, uh, obviously. But yeah, the consumption is not that amazing, as you see. I mean, it's it's really great, you know, it's it's really high, uh, com especially compared to the, to the MiG-23, but it, the MiG-23 is very efficient, so... But as you see, yeah, we are losing a lot of fuel very quickly. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, it I mean, it consumes basically 60 to 70 percent of the fuel that an F-14 consumes with just one engine. So it's a very dirty engine. But as you see, 161 kilonewtons. Very, very strong engine. Even stronger than the MLD-1. Uh, and as you see, let's go for military power. Just a smoke. I was consuming six, almost 700 kilograms of uh, fuel per minute. Small click. 400. Still producing 140 kilonewtons. Being way more efficient, being way less um, problematic with the fuel, as you see. And it's just, it's way better, you know, way better. So it's a thing that it, it helps a lot, you know, it, it really does help a lot. Helps you make sure that you are not uh, using the most amount of fuel always. So, yeah, it's just a matter of being fuel efficient and carrying less weight at the start of the match. With this, you can carry 20 minutes, 30 minutes with these aircraft. You don't have to carry 40, 50 minutes of fuel, which can be like a ton more of fuel, two tons more of fuel. So yeah, it changes a lot on the on the fuel consumption and on the amount of weight that you receive. And obviously you still have the power if you want to, you just click shift again and you will have the power. Or turn the wheel again as you saw, you can put in here and use as a throttle axis as well. So for example here I'm using it as a throttle axis. It becomes a lot more precise, to be honest, and a lot better, uh, but it's just a matter of options, you know. As you see, I'm putting like one, this is one, first stage, second stage, third stage, and the fourth stage, I think it's the last one, yeah. So, yeah, it's just a matter of, uh, it changes the way that you fly the aircraft and stuff. But I really enjoy having the, the zoom, you know, so I, it's kind of a mix between that. I mean, I wish it had a, another thing. I will try to get uh, a configuration for the shift uh, to be a little bit more precise and a little bit more effective with the, the button. But we don't need it. It's just a, a half measure, but it's, it's good enough, you know. So this way you can have the still the, the 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 zoom and just a small click makes it so that you have one of the stages of the afterburners. You see half half a stage, you know. So I hope you enjoyed a very cool and very capable uh, uh, feature and very good to actually help you consume less fuel. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you um, make sure to subscribe and I see you guys on the next one. So bye guys.